Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, David. And I uh, always uh, have a, a wish that I can just uh, develop a modern clinical design lecture uh, to the audience to share my experiences and my, my understanding in, the, in this field. So this is my first uh, lecture, and this is also my first uh, this kind of lecture recording. So if you have any questions, uh, just place uh, comments. And uh, you can see uh, that uh, the title of this uh, lecture is called the Modern Clinical Trial Design. So my basic uh, wish or extent, uh, intention is to introduce uh, modern phase one, and phase two, and also the phase three uh, clinical trial designs, especially in oncology uh, areas. Uh, I want to just like each uh, lecture to be uh, less than 30 minutes and I will try to keep it as minimal as possible. And for each lecture, I will uh, talk about one design, one concept uh, that you can easily to uh, understand and uh, catch up on every uh, terms and uh, te uh, techniques that cover in this lecture. So this is the first lecture. Okay, my name is David. I'm sorry, I uh, didn't introduce my myself before. Uh, this is the first lecture. The title is, what is the phase one oncology clinical trial uh, design? And this is the outline of this first lecture. And uh, in this lecture, I will cover uh, what is phase one oncology clinical trial? And then I will introduce the first conventional or classical designs called three plus three designs. Uh, the, the intention is that I will uh, introduce this design and to uh, let you know uh, how we evaluate a design, what it designs good or bad. And also this design is very simple, but it can provide us uh, an essential idea of what is design is like that. And then I will mention a little bit about what is a, a model-based design and a model-assist designs in phase one, those funding trials. These are very recent developed designs in this field. And I will introduce each of them in very detail in the uh, future lectures. Okay, so uh, firstly, I will also want to mention a little about what is the drug development precise. We know that the drug discovery can be categorized as two big uh, domains. And the first is the preclinical or non-clinical development. That is, we just uh, experiment on animals or cells, these kind of things. And another is called the clinical trials. Clinical trials, it has to, in, has to be involved the human beings. So it is a prospectively planned experiment for the purpose of evaluating potentially a beneficial therapies or treatments. And many times we also want to uh, uh, identify or, or just evaluate the toxicity, et cetera, of the interested uh, drugs or medications. And in general, these studies, clinical trial studies, are conducted, conducted as, and as many controlled conditions as possible. It means that we just want to exclude any confounders, any uh, other uh, factors that can influence the final results. So based on that, and with this kind of controlled conditions, uh, the clinical trials can provide us definite answers to, to, to determine the well-defined questions. That is why the clinical trial is a golden standard for the pharmaceutical companies to, to submit uh, to, to their drugs to the FDA and finally uh, would be uh, get approved, uh, go to the market. Clinical trial development uh, have four phases. So the phase one is, uh, is uh, basically, especially in oncology, uh, one of the very primary aim is to find the MTD, the maximum tori dose. So this is a uh, uh, very, very important, uh, the goal, primary primary endpoint uh, in phase one. And also in phase one, we also collect the pharmacology endpoints, the PK, the AUC, CMAX, et cetera. And uh, sometimes we also collect the PD, 
information. So this is basically phase one, it's very small phase. We will talk about in detail uh, very soon. And phase two is basically is a drug for the drug efficacy and also simultaneously monitoring the safety. And in some, uh, also many, many variants, for example, the dose ranging, et cetera. Uh, this is also called exploratory because the phase one and phase two all exploratory and just uh, have the very big function to screen uh, efficacious uh, doses for the subsequent uh, phases. The phase three is long-term large-scale uh, confirmative trials. Uh, it has a goal to be uh, marketed, to be approved by the FDA. And uh, we will talk about that. And uh, in most cases, especially oncology, uh, the end point is uh, a time to event, for example, the OS, overall survival. And the phase four is post-marketing. Uh, we will also uh, talk in the future uh, lectures. Okay. So now we uh, want to uh, have some details of, about what is the phase one clinical trials in oncology. So what are the objectives? The objective is to find the MTD guy. And uh, with what is MT MTD basically from start statistical perspective, it is can be uh, interpreted with uh, probability or a rate, for example, a target toxicity rate of fee. So what is, the fee is basically uh, commonly is a uh, range from 15% to 30 or 33% uh, like that. And uh, so um, basically for phase one, we just want to find a dose that can has associated of this kind of per specified toxicity target, right? For example, 30%. Uh, if we look at this uh, finger, uh, for example, for the phase one trials, if you have some experiences before, we know that uh, the investigator uh, should give some uh, those levels that we want to try to see which level corresponding to, for example, this is target rate, corresponding to this, right? And uh, we can assume that, especially for cytos cytotoxic agent, that with uh, those increase, the toxicity also increase. So we can assume a kind of monotone curve for this dose toxicity curve. And, uh, but the challenging thing for the human beings is that um, we cannot just do experiments, just allocating, uh, for example, 20 uh, patients to each of those levels. And after completion of the trial, uh, we calculate uh, uh, the probability, the toxicity rate at each dose level, and we just estimate this curve. No there's no way for we do the uh, clinical trials designs. Um, so this is very challenging. We have to do from the very lowest dose and uh, based on the responses and the observations on this dose, we just uh, based on this accumulated information, we update our uh, knowledge or knowing of this curve. Uh, so uh, this is the biggest challenging uh, for the phase one. Uh, because we also know that uh, the phase one trials, the sample size is very limited. Uh, many times it's just uh, below the 30 patients and sometimes even just around uh, 18 patients, for example, especially in pediatric cancer uh, drugs or experiments. And uh, we have to have some ethical considerations. The ethical considerations means that uh, our goal, of course, is to find the MTD dose, but we want a trial. Uh, after the trial, for example, we have uh, 30 patients uh, being treated uh, in this trial. We want to have most of the patients uh, being allocated or treated at uh, the true uh, dose uh, with uh, uh, target toxicity rate, MTD dose. And we don't want to add many patients being treated beyond that dose because this will be on safety over toxic dose being treated to patients. And we also don't want to many patients to be treated below this dose because below this dose is even it's safe, it's still uh, meaning that uh, the patients get uh, on therapeutic dose. So it's still unethical. So this is basically the challenging for the phase one trials. We want to, to allocate a more uh, patients to the MTD dose 
And we also want to our design to finally, based on the results, can select the right dose uh, with a very high probability. Okay, uh, so here I just want to see that, uh, show how phase one trials are conducted in practice. Uh, we have already known that the trial of phase one trials ordinarily treating the first cohort of patients, for example, three patients at the lowest dose or per specified dose. The per specified dose means, for example, uh, in my experiences in uh, pediatric cancer, because all pediatric cancer drugs have already been conducted in adult populations. And uh, many times we just uh, uh, mm, treat the children uh, on the MTD dose of the adult established MTD dose. And uh, we also want to have a backup dose, lower dose. So for the pediatric cancer, uh, this kind of phase one trials, we often, for example, start the trial from the dose level two, right? So this is kind of prescribed dose, what is my, I'm referring to. So, and then after treating the first cohort dose, we, what, what the kind of dose that we want to treat for the second cohort of patients? Right, for the future patients, future next three patients, for example, we have three possible decisions, decisions have to be made. So if the current dose is safe, of course, we should escalate the current dose. So what this means, it means that we want to assign the next cohort patients to a higher level of dose because the current dose is very safe. It means that it's under the DM, MTD dose. And if the current dose is close to the, to the uh, MTD dose, of course, we should return, we should continue to treat the uh, next cohort patients at current dose. Uh, and if the current dose is over toxic based on our observations, responses, the toxicity responses, we of course should deescalate. And uh, we can know that if our first dose is very toxic, and we apply the de-escalation, it means that the trial should be terminated, right? So this is a kind of uh, what is uh, phase one trials being done uh, in practice. Here is also a slide for, for uh, summarize a little bit about the, the phase one trials. This is uh, the first in human studies. And we also from the last uh, previous cartoon slides, we can see that phase one trials essentially can be viewed as a sequence of decision-making steps of those assignment for patients who are sequentially enrolled into the trial. Okay, so what is a pool trial design? A pool trial design, we can see that will increase a chance of this continued research into a, a, a promising drug prematurely stop early. So it means that the drug is okay, it is, it's maybe uh, we still should have the chance to, to experiment, but uh, the, the drug is too sensitive at the season. Okay, it's over toxic and we should stop early. So it's just lose the chance to find the uh, right dose. And also sometimes it's uh, uh, unnecessarily investigating for further resource in the drug. Uh, so sometimes we know that for phase one trials, especially using the conventional design, for example, three plus three designs or other algorithm-based algorithm designs, we many times find just safe tools, very safe tools, based on the literature, uh, uh, based on uh, 200 clinical trials, uh, we find that only the medium DLT is only 7%. So it's too safe, means it's too unsurprising. We just recommend very low dose uh, for the phase two, for example. So it's just uh, uh, waste our uh, resources uh, in the future because in the future, in the phase two, we will find that this dose is unefficacious, for example. So it's just uh, waste a lot of uh, resource and time and also the patient's uh, resources. So we know that, uh, of course, a while choosing dose uh, is essential for, for maximizing the uh, possibility of making the correct decision about the drug at the end of any follow-up study. Okay, so what is an ideal design? 
we have seen that uh, we have to make decisions. And uh, for example, if at the current dose level G, uh, we know the true toxicity probability at this dose level G, we denote it as PG. And the phase our target, for example, target uh, toxicity rate, for example, 30%. If PG, right, at the current level G, the toxicity probability, PG is less than phi. It means that current dose level G is safe, right? So we should escalate those. We should treat the next cohort patients at the higher level dose. And if PG is equal to phi, it means that it's okay, it's close. It's, it's just same maybe as to the, our toxic target, for example, 30%. So we should, should return, continue treat the patients as a current dose. And if PG is greater than phi, this means that current dose level G is over toxic. We should de-escalate the dose and treat the next cohort of patients at a lower dose level. So this is basically is our logic and the rationale for all uh, phase one uh, trials and all the designs uh, just based on this kind of uh, thinking. Okay, so we just repeat uh, this kind of procedure uh, until uh, uh, the maximum sample size reach to our per specified a number, for example, 30 patients. Okay, so in the real world, we know that this kind of idea design, we also call the Oracle design, uh, doesn't exist at all because PG, PG we remember is that those level G as uh, true toxicity probability is unknown. If we know, we, we just uh, use this kind of uh, inequality formula to do the uh, trials but PJ is unknown. So we have to estimate PJ uh, based on the observed data and the make the decision. For example, a very naive uh, uh, estimated toxicity rate PJ has can be using this kind of things, MG over NG. So MG is basically is just number of patients experienced the toxicity at those level G. And NG is the number of patients treated at uh, the G, those level G. Okay, so this is just a proportion, this kind of estimation, point estimation for this. Uh, okay, so in the previous, uh, all these kind of slides, I just uh, gave a very quick overview. What is the phase one trials? Uh, what is the challenges? What is the objectives? And uh, uh, what, we what, what we should do uh, for the real practices. And currently I want to introduce the uh, very uh, conventional designs. It's called the three plus three designs. Uh, firstly, I want to see this uh, flow chart, introduce this flow chart to the audience. Uh, we can see how we do the trial design using three plus three designs. Okay, so for, for example, at the current dose level G, we have three patients, right? And uh, if among the three patients, there are zero DLT, those limiting toxicity, okay? So it means that the current dose uh, is very safe. So we should escalate the dose level G, for example, to G plus one. And uh, if one among three has DITs, so it's okay, right? So we add three more patients on this dose level. So currently we, for example, okay, I just forgot to say it. And uh, uh, maybe ask, uh, uh, after the first cycle, and we just evaluate the DIT, right? Okay, so here is also like that. So add three more patients after for another side, first cycle, and we have, currently we have six patients in total. And uh, among these six patients, if less than two patients have DLT, okay, it still looks safe. So we escalate the dose level again. And uh, we, we ask, not again, we ask the dose level. And if greater than or equal to two among six patients have DLT, we should de-escalate those level. And then sometimes we maybe see that, okay, we claim this dose level as MTD. And uh, if three, among three patients greater than or equal to two have DITs, many times we just de-escalate the dose and claim the lower dose level as a DMT. So this is the three plus three designs. We can see it's very simple and very easy to implement. So it's uh, still uh, mostly uh, commonly used designs uh, in phase one trials. But uh, many researchers have demonstrated the three plus three designs uh, has a very poor performance. 
So we just want to see uh, a little bit the reason, rationale why uh, the design is not so good. So we can see that even although it is easy to implement uh, the lower chance to ident identify the MTD because we can see that basically uh, how many sample sites will be used for uh, these designs, three plus three designs, we don't know. It's basically a random sample size, right? And also the number of patients treated at any dose cannot greater than six, right? We can see it's very easy to stop, very easy to terminate the trials. So we can see that it's have very little information on each dose levels. So if we use the three plus three designs to find the MTD and after the phase one trials, we often add an ad hoc post a cohort expansion. For example, if you find the dose level three, recommend dose level three by the three plus three designs to be the MTD, we want to add, for example, six patients more to, to further evaluate the safety or toxicity of this current dose, of this dose. And uh, another thing is that if we remember that for the phase one trials, we have to have a, a, a MTD target Right, for example, 30%, 30 percent. That is that is what we want to achieve uh, to get uh, for this for the phase one trials. But for the three plus three designs, we cannot find any. We cannot find how we can in, input this parameter. Right, so it means that these three plus three designs just have no 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 goal, no aim. We just uh, send the bullet, and we don't know where it goes to. Right. So it, it cannot, it has no pre-specified yet, right? Okay. And the, another thing is that we can see that for each decision, the dose escalation or the escalation decision uh, can only be made when we have three or multiple three or six, for example, evaluable patients. So this is awkward in the real practices because for example, um, in clinical trials, uh, okay, we have six patients, but uh, uh, when we uh, reach to the end of the first cycle and we want to evaluate the DLT, and we found that, okay, one patient maybe have some um, screening test and some, uh, because many kind of evaluable or not evaluable is subjective or something. Uh, we, we, we found that one patient is not evaluable at that time. So at that time, when we want to make a decision, we only have five patients, for example. So the three plus three design cannot uh, make a decision on five patients. So this, uh, this is awkward. And we cannot just, okay, hold on this. And we just enroll another patient, uh, for example, 28 days, one month. And when this kind of patients have the information, we combine with the other previous five patients to, to get the results. So it's impossible. So, this is basically some uh, pitfalls of the three plus three designs, although it is used uh, in practices because it's simple, I think. And uh, here I want to just uh, give an example of the R code to show uh, how we read a design and how we evaluate design and how we just see, okay, what is designs good or better? And it's because this is very important for our uh, next uh, future uh, uh, lectures. I use the uh, R package called the UBCRM. And uh, here is a very, uh, has two uh, functions that can help you to see, to try to implement the three plus three designs. For example, uh, we use the same three P3, this function, and the input parameter, for example, here is a vector. This vector contains three uh, numbers, for example, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. This means that, for example, I want to just assume that we have three dose levels. And uh, for these three dose levels, uh, we assume the true toxicity probability is 10%, 20%, 30%. Okay. And uh, we just uh, using the previous, this kind of rule to run once uh, this trial. And uh, for replicated uh, results, we can set a seed, right? For example, if you change the seed, maybe this just uh, changed also. So here we just run, we get the results. So how to read the results? So we have dose level one, two, three. So after one trial, 
this is just random, right? We don't know which will happen because this is based on uh, the probability. Okay, we can see that the dose one uh, have three patients treated and zero DLT in this one time trial impl implementation. And those level two have three patients treated and two DLT. Okay, if we see this, if we have three patients, we, if we have two DLT, we have to deescalate those to those level, to lower dose and climb the lower dose as MTD, right? So we have the two dose, uh, two DLT as the dose level two. So we have to back to the dose one and climb the dose one to be the MTD. So you will never have the chance to try the dose level three. So this is a zero patients, of course, zero DLT. So we, we have analyzed the results. So we can see that, yes, of course, the MTD is dose level one because we have to deescalate to the low dose level one, right? And the last treated dose is the dose level two. So this is basically how we read these results. And uh, many times we just want to uh, do the simulation because we want to explore the operating char characteristics OC table, right? To provide data in the protocol or show to the investigator how the design as performance. So this is, for example, I just try this. Why well, try using the 1,000 times? This is just one time, this is 1,000 times and every results will be on average based on 1,000 time simulation. And I just uh, uh, modify a little bit of the last dose to be a little bit higher because this will let us to see uh, the more vivable examples of the results. So for example here, the results still read like this. We have one, two, three dose levels. And uh, for the first dose on 1,000 trials, simulated trials, on average, 3.7 patients being treated on this dose level first. And uh, the number of DLT is uh, 0.34. And the estimated uh, DLT, all we call the toxicity probability rate, is, is near 10%, right? So the recommendation is means that we have the uh, approximately 27% to recommend the dose level one to be the MTD. So this, this just read like this. And those level two, on average, we have treated 3.77 patients on those level two. And we have on average about 0.75 DLTs on this dose level. And the, based on 1,000, the, uh, the estimation of the uh, toxicity rate is 20%. And we have uh, 40, 55 uh, percent uh, to recommend this dose to be the MTD. Okay, so the third is just for the dose level three. So we can see that the three plus three zones have a very high probability to recommend the dose level two to be the MTD. Okay, so in the future, if we want to evaluate which design is good or better, we can just see these kind of things. We just using the same scenario, this we call a scenario, to be, to be, uh, do the simulation, we want to compile, okay, maybe this is, this is too toxic, this is too safe, this is okay. So we want to see, we want to see that which designs have a higher recommendation of MTD uh, to this dose level, for example. Um, so that, that design will be better design, for example. And also number of patients treated as a MTD dose uh, should be also a larger uh, than uh, inferior design. So this is three plus three designs. And I just want to um, let you know that how to evaluate designs, how to read the design results. In the future for more complicated designs, for example, CRM, et cetera, uh, the result just uh, can be explained in the same way. Okay, and now I just want to using my last slides to explain the three big types of designs for the phase one trials. So we have already know that the three plus three designs. So the first this category is called the algorithm based designs. Uh, for example, three plus designs, rolling six designs, et cetera. So we, are, we already have seen that the dose transition, that means dose escalation, et cetera, is based on a set of pre-specified rules or algorithms. We can see that, okay, if we have zero among three, we escalate, right? This is a per-specified rules. 
So for the algorithm-based designs, the design is very transparent. It's easy to implement, but the performance is poorly. Just we have, we will show in the future why it is poorly based on the simulation results. And the second uh, type is the model-based designs. So for this kind of designs, we, we can see that for three plus designs, we don't have the toxicity, uh, those toxicity model, right? For that curve, no assumption is made. But for the model-based designs, we have to assume a model for the dose toxicity curve. And then, because for every model, it means that the form is just there, and we have the unknown parameters, right? And we can, based on our data accumulated information along the precise or phase one trials, to update it, the parameter. If we update the parameter, we means that we update the model, and we can use that model to update it our toxicity probability on each dose level, right? And we can use that to guide the dose transition. And the detail I will definitely uh, introduce in the uh, future lectures. So the big, big example is the continual reassessment method called the CRM method. Uh, this kind of methods is, has good performance, but it's a little bit less transparent. It's, uh, and also uh, you need a real-time computation, right? to implement in the real trials. Um, okay, the third type is called the model assist designs. So these designs do not assume those toxicity model, but will you will use a model for, for, for the toxicity probability. For example, we assume a beta uh, distribution for that. Okay, so I just uh, forget to say that for the model-based designs and the model-assist designs, because in the phase one trials, there are very few patients. So many times we implement the Bayesian uh, estimation and the Bayesian uh, statistics uh, models uh, for, for the phase one trials. And, uh, and then the model-assist designs, the big merit, one of the big merit is its rule of those escalation and this escalation can be pertubulated before the trial, before the study, right? So it's very like the three plus three designs that the rule is just there. And we can like the clinicians, physicians, investigator to say, all the regulatory agency, for example, the FDA to say, if, if it is just a match to the clinical rationale. So it's very uh, useful and very important uh, aspects of the model of C designs. There are basically three big types all big designs of the model C designs, uh, the MTPI designs, the bone designs, and the keyboard designs. And I will introduce uh, each uh, 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 in the future lecture. So this kind of designs are transparent, so we, we will see. And also easy to implement, and also have good performance. Good performance means that they have comparable performance to the uh, model-based designs. Okay, I think this is my first uh, lecture. And uh, I also want to see the courtesy use some slides from uh, Dr. Ingyuan from MD Anderson Cancer Center. And uh, uh, also apologize me because this is my first uh, lecture and I don't have experiences and uh, because there are no students or audience there. Uh, if you have, I will try to improve my quality and also my English and uh, uh, in the future, and if you have any comments, and also if you want to listen to any kind of designs you should be interested, I will just uh, try to uh, to do that. Okay, thank you very much.